Hey kids, welcome to another math video. This is module six, lesson two, homework. And the objective here is to construct a coordinate system on a plane, a P-L-A-N-E. And no, they don't mean like you're flying away on vacation. Uh, it means that you're gonna have a flat space and you're going to organize it in a grid so that you can find your way. Uh, think of a map and finding your way on Google Maps and uh, going down one street versus another, where do you turn left, where do you turn right? So that we just live on a big plane when you're looking at Google Maps and we're gonna try to uh, create the same type of thing here with our X, Y axes. So you, if you have these tools, that's great. If you don't, I've got a workaround for you. Uh, it says use a set square to draw a line perpendicular to the x-axis through point P. Label the new line as the y-axis. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I never had a set square, didn't even know what it was. Um, so this is what a set square is, and you might notice here that it has this nifty little uh, 90 degree angle here. Um, the only problem is that, I don't know if you can see, but it's almost like it's kind of a soft corner right there. And so that doesn't really go for making great lines that uh, run right into here because it tends to go and it curves right there. So I like to kind of use it against something else. And this is if you have one, um, they'll say, oh, you know, put, I don't even know if this is how people use it professionally, but we're not professionals. We're like fifth graders. Uh, you can slide. It's like the old-fashioned slide rule, I suppose. Uh, you can slide your set square along the line that you already have. And now watch as I slide it along. Notice that I'm holding my ruler real tight there on the x-axis. And I can slide my set square right up to the point for P. And I can at least make my line right here so that it almost or just barely runs into it. Ideally, what I like to do is I like to hold the set square on one axis, so like on the X, and then I like to put the ruler through the point where I'm gonna draw the line. So notice how I'm lining them up right across point P, holding it steady so that I actually take this away and then I make my, my line so that I prefer extending it um, past just so that I can make sure it crosses it. Because in sixth grade, you're going to realize that positive numbers and positive numbers on the X, Y axes actually lead you to negative numbers and negative numbers down here. But apparently the math people that be say, oh, fifth graders can't handle negative numbers. So they took those away from us. So anyway, draw your perpendicular, which means crossing at a 90 degree angle, line 2x that goes through point P and label it Y. So now hopefully you just did that if you didn't pause it and do it. This also needs uh, a line that goes through point P, but notice that this is actually on the X axis. So we have to, again, take your set square if you have one and you can do the whole slide thing again. Now let's say you don't have one. But you do have a lot of other things laying around, like you might have a piece of paper. And this is just a plain old piece of paper because the corners of most papers have a 90 degree corner. So this is what I call a workaround. And so you can lay the paper down and use that as your straight edge or use that as your, um, your set square. And then you can take your ruler and just lay it right here where I was saying how I like to do it so I can draw it past that point. And then you can just put your point in like so. And you can check to see if it's actually 90 degrees with other papers. Now, this shows up better on camera because it's a bright color. So if this is the corner that I cut from construction paper, you just snug it right in there and go, yep, 90 degrees. Okay, and here's one that's just a, a scrap of a pumpkin. And I was like, oh look, I'm out of, I can't find my set square. So boop, you just stick that right in the corner and then you can make sure that you have a 90 degree angle. So those are the workarounds, works pretty well. Uh, but this is all done with that. And now we're going to finish our task. Label as Y. 
Okay, so uh, now we're going to choose one of the sets of perpendicular lines above and create a coordinate plane. Now the coordinate plane means it's going to look like the graph down below. Mark five units on each axis and label them as whole numbers. Well, best way to do that is to take a small ruler and you can use a large ruler if you want because they have the same measurements, but I like to use centimeters. In fact, I like to use half centimeters. Um, notice that I'm gonna snug it right up to the line and I'm just gonna mark it. Now, where am I gonna mark it? You could put, see this little end piece right here? I gotta zoom it in for you. See how the centimeter starts a little in from the end right there? So that's zero. Now you could start at zero or you could start at one or you could start at two. You could really start anywhere. But what you wanna do is on this graph, it's small and we have to use five units. So I'm gonna mark every half centimeter. I'm even gonna start on the one and notice how I'm lining it up right along here. And this is my origin at zero. I'm just putting tick marks. One, two, three, four, five. Just put little tick marks. One, two, three, four, five. So we don't have to measure any specific um, amounts, but I'm looking at every half centimeter as a regular interval with which I can mark on my graph. Okay, and again, you can just put it on any number as long as you can see that it's snugged right up there. I use this five as my zero point, and then I just go like this, tick mark, tick mark, tick mark, tick mark. And now I have one, two, three, four, five. Now it says create a coordinate plane, so I'm gonna use my little tick marks to uh, have regular lines. It's hard for kids to really be precise here. Uh, you can use either side of your ruler. If I use my left side, I can see how my uh, lines are straight or if they're not straight. Remember, everything should be parallel. And, and this is just kind of a rough, uh, a rough go, so you don't want to have it like this. Obviously, that's not very straight. Okay, so put your pencil on the little tick mark and you want to make parallel to X, parallel to X and to the other one. Okay, and so just finish out your coordinate plane. There you go. And so now you have a coordinate plane with five units on each axis. And we labeled them as whole numbers. Ta-da, done. All right, next step. Use the coordinate plane to answer the following. We're gonna move up a little bit here. Okay, name the shape at each location. Uh, we have this nice, fun little uh, coordinate plane, coordinate grid, sometimes is what they'll call it, uh, with all these shapes on it. So remember, X comes first, then Y, in an ordered pair that looks like that. So if X is two, you're gonna follow along on the bottom first, always the bottom first. Find the two, then the Y is four. Go up the two, until you find the four. That shape is a circle. Thank goodness you guys know that. Okay, then we have the five for the X coordinate right here and the Y coordinate still four. Uh, some kids will say it's a diamond. Some kids will say it's a rhombus. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just gonna put rhombus. A lot of kids will say diamond. Um, X coordinate of one right here, and then a Y coordinate of five, so you have to go way up, 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 triangle. And X coordinate of five all the way out here, and a Y coordinate of one up, only one for heart. And so the trick here is X is first, so think of it as walking before climbing. So you wanna go walking, then climbing in that order for X and Y. Um, which shape is two units from X? So basically the Y value that's two. Yeah, it's so confusing for kids when they say, but it says X, no, it's from X. So they're saying, which shape is two units away from X? 
here's the two that's going away so that is the star correct and as always let me just remind you guys this is the homework page and I know I'm doing it but you should already have tried it already you should complete your homework and then just check this uh, to make sure you did okay and also click subscribe come back you'll be notified when I upload a new video okay which shape has the same X and Y coordinate Ooh, this is important so you want to look for when a shape has the same X and same Y it's gonna be like here 1 1 or 2 2 or oh, 3 3 and so which shape is that square and notice that if a shape or if anything has the same XY coordinate, guess where it's going to be? Right in the center of your graph. Right cutting all the way out. Center. Psh, diagonal. Okay? Very important concept. Because then when you're doing your XY coordinates, look at this cute little thing. Isn't that sweet? Teach appreciation. Ah. Uh, just love it okay um, so anyway yes uh, when you're talking about X and Y's X is equal to Y that would be that um, middle spot okay next one use the coordinate plane to answer the following name the coordinates of each shape now they're telling you look at the shape and use the X first then Y X first then Y Okay, so you're going to go this way first, then you're going to go up. Okay, first go this way, second, go up. Okay, moon. Here's the moon. First go this way. What are we counting by? This is a number line, but we're not counting by ones. We're counting by halves. So one and a half, two and a half. So we wanted to get right down here for our x value. Again, got to go this way even though it's way up high go this way first find the address of your x coordinate and then find the address of your coordinating y so you go right over and it's four then the sun oh the sun looks more like a flower i know for some of you guys will be like it's so sunny it's a happy face um sun is like the flower and that's going to be a four, three. Now this is like, do kids really get it? This way, four, back to here for three. Some kids will have the opposite ones and they'll mix it up uh, or they'll have something close for, for that one. Uh, heart, easier. One, two. Remember, this way first, then up and coordinate. Cloud. Right here. Okay, what do you do when you, there's you're not going anywhere on X? That's a zero. Don't go anywhere on down X Street. Okay, but you do go up the Y axis to what? Well, that's between four and five, so it's four and a half. Smiley face. Here we are at three and a half for X. Always going this way first. Three and a half. And our Y value. Go back over here. What is between five and six? Okay, five and a half. So now which two shapes have the same Y coordinate? So you go up here and you go, which two shapes have the same Y coordinate? Four, three, two, four and a half, five and a half. Heart and star, let's see. Heart and, hmm, hold on one second. Star, I think they might have changed. Moon, sun, heart, cloud, smiley face. Let me check my work. Five and a half, five and a half. Okay. Four, three, two, four and a half, five and a half. Same Y coordinate. Which two shapes? Oh, oh, we haven't done it yet. Oh, that's why. I'm like, check here. There's nothing. Oh, I love that when that happens. Okay. Which two shapes have the same Y coordinate? Go to the Y. And look for something that has the same Y. Here it is. Heart and star. That's why. And so uh, heart and star. See, we don't have the star up here. Oh, I love this program. Okay. 
So heart and star, anyway, here they are right on two. Plot an X at two, three. Again, use your X first, then Y, two for X, and then three, up, 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 right to here. And we're gonna put an X. X marks the spot. And plot a square at three, two and a half. Three, two and a half, up, 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 up. Two and a half right here, and it's gonna be a square. So make a square, not a rectangle. There you go. Done, done. Plot a triangle at six, three and a half. Six, all the way out here on X, and then three and a half, up, up, up. Three, three and a half. Okay, triangle. Triangle, three angles, three sides, colored in, and bam, done. Okay. Oh, this one looks so familiar. You know why? Because it's the homework, and I, of course, have an old book. It's very similar to the homework from lesson one, okay? But this one is just slightly different. It's like it's enlarged. They got bored with pictures and said, I think I'll just blow this up and ask a question again. Mr. Palmer this time plans to bury a time capsule 10 yards behind the school. What else should he do to make naming the location of the time capsule more accurate? So 10 yards behind the school. So, well, where would that be? Well, where's 10 yards? Is it going to be over here? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be here? Where, where is, like, if behind is behind the school and we have the playground and the baseball field to work with, where will the X be? Okay. Is it out here? Is it out here? So what should he do to make naming the location more accurate? He should... Okay, use a grid of coordinate measurements. Use a grid of, you can even say coordinated measurements, M-E-A-S-U-R-E-M-E-N-T-S, -E -E there you go. Okay, um, have regularly spaced number lines, have an X-Y axis, have a, an origin point. Okay, so you want to have a place to start. Um, use regular, uh, regularly spaced. Man, that fan is terrible. Regularly spaced numbers. Okay, and so you can count in um, like halves or holes or whatever would work, okay? And so you want to be able to say, well, w at which point is this my origin? Origin, is this the point of beginning? Because then am I gonna go this way and am I gonna go this way? So you're coordinating your points and that's what we wanna do. And so you can just kind of freehand it or I don't know, kids, you might need a ruler. <laughs> um, Coordinate your points, and that's really, coordinate your points. Really a good answer. On a grid. All right, I hope this is helpful. There you go. So uh, again, workarounds, 90 degree angles, find something you can use at home, measure carefully, have fun with it, and we'll see you on the next one. I hope this is helpful. Uh, click subscribe, come back, bye.